Ladies, gentlemen, and hunters of all ages, Wild Hearts is a game is full of wonderful weapons, but only one of them stands above the rest to me as my personal favorite. Based on general usage rates I've seen and researched myself, it isn't necessarily the most popular weapon by any means, but it is my favorite, and I know it's the favorite of many of you as well. As such, it was the first weapon that I made a proper endgame build for, and I wanted to share it with you all. Mall mains out there, or even just if you're considering using the mall potentially, if you want to see what it looks like fully beefed up, this is it, and well, to put it simply, this thing shreds kimono. You will see it in the footage, but Maul being one of the only weapons in the game that can do ridiculously high damage hits on repeat without needing to build up a gauge or do any sort of proper setup means that you can just smack things in their weak spots for insane damage on repeat, killing them at speeds that few, if any other weapons, can actually match. Simply because anything that can do higher damage generally also requires more buildup than Maul does and setup to make it happen. So today, let's show off the best of Maul and go into the best build that Maul can get in Wild Heart's current state of existence. First up then, let's go into the armor. Maul doesn't require stamina skills, and while Karakuri can help it, it doesn't need the constant usage of it that Human Path provides. So if you just want pure damage, Maul is best used with Kimono Path armor and skills to get the most out of it. That said, there are a couple of quests where Human Path Maul is good to have around, so at the end of the video I will quickly blitz through the Human Path Maul build as well. As for the armor for Kimono Path, then, this is pretty similar for most Kimono Path builds. You want the Ember Plume helmet specifically because it has deaf ears to make you ignore roars, but more importantly, Solar Protection. This gives you a straight up 5% attack and defense boost during daylight hours. You can force this by resting at your house in Minato or at a tent on a map, but some quests are locked to night, so it's important to point out this is incredibly interchangeable with the Fume Beak helmet, which also has deaf ears and has 5% Lunar Protection, the nighttime equivalent skill. Whichever of these helmets you use, you want them to be Kimono Path modded, so you push your bar towards full Kimono Path. For the chest piece, we're going for Ember Plume again. The main reason is that it has 7% Desperation. Desperation lowers your defense and raises your attack by an equal amount, so this skill on this armor piece is worth a 7% attack buff at the cost of 7% of your defense. This build as a total will have 37% Desperation by the end of it if you include my personal talismans, which is 37% reduced defense. And I know that sounds like a lot, but having done every quest in the game now, there is literally a single attack on the hardest quest possible, none of the others, that can one-shot you through this defense loss. And as far as I'm concerned, with the way that healing works and the various healing fusion carrot curry, this build is actually still worth using in any scenario where you don't get one-shot. Though, if you don't like the sound of that, that's why I will also quickly present the Human Path build at the end, simply because Maul is a weapon where you sometimes need to trade damage, allowing yourself to get hit by the kimono knowing that it lets you get off your biggest hit for a ton of damage in return. Hit me. And of course you want the chest piece to be Kimono Path mod as well for those lovely Kimono points. Then our arms are going to be Ember Plume once again for the sole reason that they have another 7% Desperation on them. There are other skills that I'll talk about later on these armor pieces, but for now we're just going over the properly important skills, the ones that are the reason that we chose these armor pieces over any others within the slots. For our legs we're going to be using Final Boss, I'll blur out any spoilers here, but these are the skills that are on them, and the reason that we want these is that 10% Battle Spirit Kimono skill. This is simply 10% bonus attack when hitting a kimono that is enraged. Kimonos seem to be enraged for somewhere around half of a hunt, so let's say this averages out around a 5% attack boost over the course of an entire hunt, which is more than any other legs can give you with a kimono path build specifically. Then for our feet, this is a little bit personal choice, as the feet slot is a bit weak for kimono path. The one that you probably want to go for with this specific build in particular is the Ice Tusk Cobalt Lava Back set specifically, because they have the Resurrection skill. This skill will keep you from dying to a hit that would otherwise kill you one time, and it is relatively useful as a result. Especially with Maul tending to trade damage on occasion and the amount of desperation that we are running. The other option is King Tusk Legs for plus 5 health and plus 3 savage, however it's worth noting plus 3 savage on this specific build and setup seems to only be about a 1% damage boost. Savage seems to scale poorly with higher attack weapons and builds, which this absolutely is one of. So I would say Resurrection is generally better value, but if you are good enough to never need to trigger that skill then it's worthless and 1% damage with 5 maximum health is nothing to scoff at. Past that then, let's have a look at our weapon and how we've built it. The final tier weapon for Maul is about the easiest thing to decide in the world once you've looked at the skills, and it is this Raw Attack Golden Tempest one without element on it. Generally for an all around build you want to go for Raw Attack, which this is, and the amount that it has on it is tied for the highest pure attack on any Maul in the game. The reason that we chose it specifically though is it has 30% tunnel vision as an inherent skill. This skill makes the timing window on 
on extending your maul after a hit slightly shorter, but in exchange gives you a 30% attack boost for a few seconds after a successful extension. In my experience, even with the skill at 30%, the extension window is more than long enough, and so this basically just translates to 30% bonus attack on all of your strongest attacks. No other maul has attacked this high with an inherent skill this good, so this is clearly the one to go for here. As for our inherited skill choices, Maul has a bit of a winding path, but there are definitely far more confusing ones to go for for other weapons. We start off by going to the right and then diagonally down to reach the Rack Maul Rhododendron 2 for its 5% Tiger's Den Inherited. This is a Kimono Path skill that gives you 5% bonus attack at the cost of making it take a bit longer to recover from ailments. A very sensible trade if you ask me, especially in an offensively focused build, and especially when the healing Vaporizer Fusion Karakuri exists, which clears all ailments for a measly 5 thread if you are ever in a fight where ailments are actually a big deal. The step immediately after this has 4% extended wrap as an inherited skill, and while this won't be on our final weapon if you plan to use this weapon before that point, I absolutely recommend picking this up along the way. Extended wrap is a maul exclusive skill that simply boosts the damage of your extended maul hits by the percentage labeled on it, so this skill is quite literally 4% bonus damage to extended hits, and given that our extended hits are where about 90% or possibly even more of our damage actually comes from, this skill is incredible. From here, we simply take the most direct path downwards to the right right side final boss weapon, so that we can pick up a 6% extended wrap inherited skill, then diagonally back up until you reach the Amber Maul here to get its 15% desperation inherited skill, wrap around a bit to get to the Yokai Hour Maul for its 6% extended wrap inherited skill, and then simply finish off down at that raw Golden Tempest weapon that we talked about earlier. As a total with this path, it gives our weapon 30% tunnel vision, 12% extended wrap, 15% desperation, and 5% Tiger's Den. These are all active on all of our important attacks, so this may as well be a 62% or so general increase to our attack, which is absolutely nutty. On top of that, the weapon by default has 10% sleight of hand fury, which is just a 10% attack boost for about 5 seconds after conjuring a basic Karakuri, and also 5% inversion attack, which gives you a 5% attack boost for a short period of time after being knocked to the ground by a kimono, and regardless of those two skills, a 62% boost to a 1300 attack weapon is ridiculously high damage coming out of it as you can clearly see in the footage. As for your talismans for the maul, there is a maul specific weapon skill talisman out there in the world, but it doesn't really give us a skill worth having more than general damage skills, so don't really worry about it. Instead, focus on damage increases. In this build, I've got these five equipped, this one because it has 6% final blow, which is just a 6% damage increase on downed kimono. When this activates, it's a really nice pop of extra damage. I have two different talismans that are in use because they have 4% desperation on them each, which I've already explained as a skill and why it's good. Then I I have a 2% and a 3% Battle Spirit Talisman for a combined 5% bonus damage to Enraged Kimono. Generally speaking, these are particularly good skills to look out for, but Talismans are RNG, so you just want to think over what the most damage that you can get from your specific Talismans are, and work around that. With that done, let's go over the handful of ball skills that we've chosen not to use in this build and explain why just for the sake of it. First up is Expert Hitter. This skill makes your ball extend after you hit enough Karakuri with your spin attack. It's a fun little gimmick skill, but it's hard to actually justify this over a 5% attack boost when it isn't within the normal optimal playstyle, especially as this build is simply meant to maximize the offensive potential of the weapon. Then we have Shockwave. This increases what is essentially stun damage dealt to kimono with extended maul attacks. A kimono is rendered unconscious when enough damage has been done to their head, which is essentially just a free knockdown. While this skill can have use in most situations, you'd have to stack it pretty hard to actually get extra unconscious and knockdowns in a fight, so at least for solo play this isn't generally as good as the 5% damage skill, which I mentioned because, again, it is our lowest damage increase inherited skill on the weapon that we've gone for. In multiplayer, you could definitely argue that this shockwave may be worth it as a knockdown is free damage for everyone, not just you, but in solo play, Maul is good enough at creating its own damage windows. There's power smash boost attack. This simply increases the damage done by your spinning attacks, but these aren't generally worth doing, really, as Maul is just sort of focusing pure damage. It will just not be doing the spin attacks. It'll be doing its standard attack combo. Combo. The best damage combo doesn't involve spinning, simple as that. And even though you can end a spin with your big smackdown move, the normal highest damage move, if you do that at the end of the spin combo, it actually does less damage than the same move does at the end of the normal combo. Then we have Hell of Extension Training. This prevents reeling from attacks when using an extended maul, and this simply makes it so you don't flinch when hit with a tiny attack while using extended maul attacks. It doesn't prevent full knockdowns, and only about 5% of the attacks in the game, in my experience,
points are actually affected by the skill, so generally I don't consider it all that useful. There are, however, some exceptional fights where I think otherwise, like Sportail as an example who has a bunch of little rats that beat you up constantly. Then finally is Rapid Halt. This decreases stamina use by a fixed percentage for a short period of time after an aerial extension. This skill isn't bad for its intended purpose, but its purpose is aerial mall builds, and this is simply not an aerial build, as on the whole, grounded playstyles for this weapon do quite a bit more damage. With that covered then, let's go over our skill list as a whole. 30% tunnel vision from the weapon, 12% extended wrap from the weapon, 3 savage from the king tusk boots, 9 health boost the boots combined with the talismans as well, 26% blaze resilience from the chest piece, which just makes the blaze ailment build up 26% slower, 12% root health from the legs, which just reduces the rate of build up for any ailments by 12%, 6% final blow from my talisman, 10% strong arm spirit from the gloves and also one of my talismans, this gives you a 10% boost to crit chance for a few seconds after using the hunter's arm mechanic, 10% sleight of hand fury from the weapon, 5% critical draw from the gloves, but this is mostly useless for maul, as we don't get much out of our draw attack, so it's just sort of a bonus skill. 2% fire boost does actually nothing for us, it's just a secondary skill from one of my talismans, 15% battle spirit from the legs and also my talismans combined, 5% inversion attack from the weapon, 15% self control from the chest piece. This gives you 15% faster stamina recovery when only one life thread remains. This is more useful than it sounds as there are a number of quests in the game that only have one life thread by default from the very beginning. Deaf ears on the helmet. 5% Tiger's Den on the weapon, 37% Desperation from our armor, the weapon, and then also my personal talismans, and then 5% Lunar or Solar Protection depending on which helmet you are using at the time. As far as Karakuri go then, for Maul the basic Karakuri don't really do anything specifically good for you, however the fusions are absolutely where it's at, and you want to focus entirely on Lockdown Karakuri, by which I mean things like the Chain Trap, the Harpoon, and the Fireworks. These let you use your strongest combo for the weapon back to back on the weakest parts of the kimono because they can't move, and that is how you get the most damage by a landslide. So your basic Karakuri loadout on most hunts will be boxes, stakes, springs, and then either gliders or fireworks. Gliders are more just for the movement and allow you to create healing mist fusion for some constant healing, but they can also be combined with stakes to get a down on flying kimono. However, I also said torches because on kimono that fly constantly, you'd actually rather have fireworks as this is a cheaper way to get a guaranteed knockdown whenever a kimono takes to the skies, as it is six Karakuri thread instead of eight. I know that may not sound like much, but if you're using it on repeat, it definitely adds up. Your playstyle with this build is quite simple, but extremely satisfying. Aim to open up the fight by connecting with the end of your attack one extension combo on a weak spot. Kimono don't tend to get aggressive with you until you do the first hit of damage, so with a bit of good timing and positioning, you can usually open up with your strongest hit before they even roar. After that, get another combo in while it's roaring because we have earplugs. Then stick down a chain trap or harpoon, use this period of downtime to do your big combo some more, then put another one of these traps down when it gets free and continue this loop. If you run out of thread before the kimono leaves the zone, just look for your openings to do the big combo, simple as that. Any time that you can get that final hit of that combo off is worth about three times as much damage as even your second strongest attack, so this should generally just be your focus at all times. That's everything that you need to know to make this build absolutely shine, but as I promised earlier, we will briefly go over the human path version of the build as well. This is the human modded Golden Tempest helmet specifically for the 3% Verb, which is bonus attack and defense while at full health. The Cobalt Lava Back and Ice Tusk set chest piece because it has 3% Pummel Booster, which is just a 3% damage boost flat out to all of our attacks. The Amaterasu Gloves for Celestial Breath, which just gives you Celestial Thread as you attack the Kimono and thus lets you place more traps and general lockdown. The Cobalt Lava Back and Ice Tusk set legs in Human Path for another 3% Pummel Booster, and the Golden Tempest Boosts in Human Path as well for another 3% Verb, and also 3 Savage for a slight attack boost. Then for your weapon, the end goal is still the same one, even though it does waste one inherited slot. 30% tunnel vision is just too strong to ignore regardless. For the other inherited, the path is mostly the same except for what you keep. The ones that you're aiming for are right side final boss for that 6% extended wrap, up diagonally to get that 10% verve inherited skill, then around through here to get an 8% final blow, back winding up over here to get the extended wrap 6% second one, and from there you can either keep 8% final blow and just go right to the Golden Tempest, or drop back diagonally over here and replace Final Blow with 15% Shockwave if you want to, that choice is up to you. And that's everything everyone, essentially two full builds for them all, how you should use them, what talismans you want to aim for, and an explanation of what to do in general if you want to make Maul as strong as it can possibly be, which as you've seen is extremely 
extremely, extremely strong. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I hope you enjoy using this build if you choose to do so, whether you were a mall main before or if you're just looking to convert now. Like if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more. And most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye